One type of calculation that a chemist uses a lot in a laboratory setting is stoichiometry. And stoichiometry really isn't that much different from how one would scale a recipe in the kitchen. And for example, take this lasagna recipe that I pulled off the internet somewhere. According to the recipe, to make four servings, you require this much of each ingredient. However, if you only wanted to serve two, you probably know that you'd go through and cut everything in half. For example, instead of using eight chopped tomatoes, you'd only use four. Instead of using four cloves of garlic, you'd only use two. Extend that idea to a chemical reaction, like the one between nitrogen and hydrogen, to produce ammonia, NH3. According to the balanced chemical equation, one nitrogen reacts with three hydrogens and will produce two ammonias. Or if you think of these coefficients on the mole scale, one mole of N2 will react with three moles of H2 and produce two moles of NH3. But let's say instead of one mole of ammonia, or excuse me, one mole of nitrogen, you have five moles of nitrogen. Like before, you probably look at this equation and scale everything up really in your head. Five moles of nitrogen will require 15 moles of hydrogen. give you 10 moles of ammonia. You can do these kind of conversions using dimensional analysis. We set it up that way and treat moles of nitrogen and say for example moles of ammonia as two units you want to convert between. From the chemical reaction, we see that for every one mole of nitrogen, we need two moles of ammonia. So we can use that as our conversion factor. And again, we get 10 moles of ammonia. Now, one difference between a lab and a kitchen is that you can count out eight tomatoes or four cloves of garlic. You can't really count out five moles of a chemical. Right? Even if you could reach down and pick them out one at a time. It's more common to start with some other unit of measurement, for example, mass. So instead of five moles of nitrogen, let's say you have five grams of nitrogen. Let's see how many grams of ammonia we can produce. Now remember, this 1 to 3 to 2 ratio, that's by, um, that's numeric. You know, for example, by mole. It doesn't relate everybody by mass. Just like in our little lasagna recipe, um, it's 8 tomatoes per 4 gar garlics. But that doesn't translate into mass. You can't say for eight pounds of tomatoes, you need four pounds of garlic. Right? All right, these are related numerically, just like the coefficients in our equation. So if we want to go between these two units, we need to first convert our given mass into moles. And we can do that using molar mass. If you look on the periodic table, nitrogen is 28.2 grams per mole. And you can calculate NH3's molar mass, which is 17.03 grams per mole. So just like our other calculations that were essentially unit conversions, we start with what's given, 5 grams of nitrogen. Using molar mass, we can convert that to moles of nitrogen. An 
just as we did before, to go between moles of one substance to moles of another, we use the coefficients from our balanced equation. So again, for every one mole of N2, we'll get two moles of NH3. And to get our answer in grams, we can use ammonia's molar mass. That's the unit we want, so we take our calculator and multiply and divide as needed, and we get 6.1 grams in H3. Let's look at another example. Let's look at the reaction between sodium and chlorine to give you sodium chloride. Let's say we have 12 grams of sodium. Let's try to figure out how many grams of chlorine we need to react with all 12 grams. If you look on the periodic table, sodium's got a molar mass of 22.99 grams per mole. Chlorine, Cl2, is 70.9 grams per mole. So just like before, we'll start with what's given, which is 12 grams of sodium. If we treat it like a unit conversion, we want to convert grams of sodium to grams of chlorine. Just like before, first thing we need to do is convert grams to moles. So we'll use sodium's molar mass. And to go from moles of what was given to moles of the other chemical, we use a mole ratio that we get from the balanced chemical equation. So in this case, it's two sodiums for every one chlorine. So it's two moles of sodium for one mole of chlorine. If we write it like that, the unwanted unit drops out. If we're looking for grams, we got to use chlorine's molar mass to convert it from grams or from moles to grams. And that would give us 18.5 grams of chlorine. So if you compare these two examples, they're very, very similar. They're more or less identical. Anytime you do stoichiometry, the first thing you want to do is get what's given to units of moles. So in the case of grams, you'd use molar mass. And to go between moles of what you started with to moles of what you want to find, and you have to use a mole ratio that you get straight from the balanced chemical equation.